another Nintendo Direct has come and gone, and as usual, it's left several new games behind in its wake. And one of those games just happens to be Mario Tennis Aces on Nintendo Switch. But unlike its bare-bones predecessor being Ultra Smash on Wii U, there's actually enough to analyze here. So it's time to boot up the old analysis machine and see what secrets it might be hiding. And right off the bat, or racket I suppose, we can see that this is a major upgrade over the Wii U version in pretty much every way. Not the least of which is the attention to detail. In fact, this is the first time in Mario Tennis history that the characters have worn tennis appropriate attire, including polo shirts with visible buttons, shorts, tennis shoes, and even visors that laid the character's hair visible. Let me tell you, Waluigi has never looked so dapper. And somehow Wario's hair looks exactly as I expected it to, which I don't really know if that's a compliment or not. But the main characters aren't the only ones dressed for the occasion, as the audience members now wear clothing to match their player of choice on that side of the court. As can be seen here with them wearing Luigi hats and shirts, as well as occasionally waving flags around and holding up signs. It's a neat arms-like touch. And that audience, by the way, is a lot more diverse now than it was in Ultra Smash as well. Sure, Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Spikes, Toads, and Shy Guys are all back and in multiple colors in the case of the latter two. But on top of them, you can now also find Paragoombas, Paratroopas, Adorable Little Penguins, Bigger Penguins, Hammer Brothers, and Sumo Brothers. Now granted, most of the audience still look like cardboard cutouts, but closer to the court, you'll find some fully 3D characters cheering you on as well. In addition to the support crew, which includes Camera Toads, Boom Mic Operators, The Lion Judges, Lakitu acting as a ball boy or ball girl, and of course the chair umpire, which once again is a toad in this case. Now all of these guys also appeared in Ultra Smash, although the umpire seems to have lost his automatically swiveling chair from the last game, and now has to turn his head and exert actual effort into the game. It's almost like commentary Ultra Smash itself. And speaking of the court, the one in this stadium appears to be especially high tech, since it appears to be made out of a giant screen. As you can see when the boundary markings light up, and with a quick animation that plays on either end of the court featuring the players' names before the match begins. In fact, screens can be found all around the court too, displaying different things depending on what exactly is going on. For the most part, they just seem to function as cool looking graphic equalizers. But at other times, they seem to display some pertinent information, such as if you're caught in a tiebreaker. Or, at the start of a match, the closer ones will display your character's name, while ones farther back play an animation during your character's entrance which we're guessing is unique to that character since the one from Mario here is an old-school 2D version of himself walking. Neat! And speaking of which, yeah, characters seem to have actual court introductions now, a la the Mario Strikers series, which is something we haven't really seen in the tennis games up until now, although it is possible that these only show up as part of the game's new story mode, but we'll have more on that in a little bit. For now though, let's focus in on the gameplay, or as much as we can anyway, because it's still Mario Tennis and you kind of know what you're getting into. So from the looks of it, the basics are all still there, such as how the color of the ball's tail still reveals which shots are being used. Purple indicates a flat shot, red topspin, blue a slice, and yellow a lob. Oh, and charge shots are clearly back too, except this time with a much more obvious glow effect around your character when you start charging. But what about the controversial chance shots? You know, those colored glowing spots that appear randomly on the ground and power up specific shots? Well, based on this trailer, I have some good news and bad news. The bad news is, for me at least, it seems that chance shots are back. But the good news is, barely. Because we only ever see a single type being used throughout the trailer, being the purple smash ones. Now, that doesn't mean that the others are gone for sure, but it does seem unlikely that we'd see no sign of them here if they weren't. Okay, so clearly it's all pretty similar so far. But the announcer does say, and I quote, There are new wrinkles that will challenge your ability to read an opponent's position and stroke to determine which shot will give you an advantage. Now, we're not entirely sure what that means, but we have a sneaking suspicion that's related to the brand new power meter that each character has. We can see them fill up a little bit upon the successful serve. And that's it. Unfortunately, there's not enough gameplay here for us to see what else affects them. Nor can we really tell what exactly they're for. However, we do get a small taste of what might happen in the prompt plan mission scene, where we can see that Mario's meter is maxed out and glowing blue. But unfortunately, it's still not clear exactly the effect it's having, if any, because it might be something you have to activate manually once you have a full meter. And perhaps related to that, we did notice that the blue glow of a charged shot does look pretty similar to the glow of that meter. So could the two be related somehow? Or maybe this is where the final shot of the trailer comes into play where Mario smashes the ball from a purple chance spot so hard that it breaks Wario's racket in half. But look, you can still see him holding onto the handle as the head goes flying off. Now this seems way too powerful to be an ordinary move. So maybe this is what happens when you fire a shot from the chance shot with a fully charged meter? Again, we're just speculating. 
But whatever's going on here, the screens in the background do change to mark the occasion the very moment Warrior's racket breaks, displaying mushrooms and question blocks. And that's pretty much all we can discern about the core tennis gameplay. So for now, let's turn our attention to the stadium itself, which has a split roof through which you can see the night sky as well as a blimp that floats by. In addition, there's a big screen TV on one end of the court and a giant spinning tennis ball statue at the other. Wait a second, does any of this look familiar? Yeah, this arena is remarkably similar to the one and only from Ultra Smash, sharing the same split roof, big screen TV, and spinning tennis ball. Aside from some tweaks and the night theme, this is pretty much the exact same stadium, as you can clearly see from this angle. Hmm. So either it's seen some major investment in the last couple of years, or the game's developers simply decided to reuse the basic design to save time and money. In fact, if we take a look at the zoomed out version of the stadium in the story mode, we can see some hot air balloons that surround it. Which, you guessed it, have the exact same designs of the hot air balloons that also appeared in Ultra Smash. I'm on to you, Camelot. Anyways, this is the map for the game's new story mode, where you'll travel across the land, engaging in different tennis-based missions and boss battles. That's right, boss battles, but we'll get to them soon enough. The dots on the map clearly mark the path they've unlocked so far, and since we can see that they start at the stadium, it's probably safe to assume that that's the starting point of the adventure. And speaking of the stadium, when we saw it before it was at night time, but clearly it's during the day on the map. So is it possible that the time of day might change throughout the course of the game? From there, you'll cross a bridge to a larger dot, which could possibly represent a mission, but we think it may actually just be a blank spot to rest on, since it not only looks inactive compared to the dot at the stadium, but also that there's nothing interesting going on around here, unless that rock behind the tree counts. Anyway, even though we don't see Mario finish crossing the bridge, we do get a glimpse as to where else the adventure might take him. Because just ahead, the path branches off in a couple of different directions, one of which leads to some ruins among these mountains. The other path extends through a forest, where we can just barely see some prop plants waiting for Mario, the first of which is right next to a mission marker. And we're guessing that's exactly where this scene takes place, where Mario has to rebound fiery tennis balls back at the prop plants that they're constantly spitting at him. Now even though there are at least 7 prompt plants to deal with here, it looks like they'll each go down with a single hit. Now although the visible path stops here, we're pretty sure you'll have to take on the prompt plant just ahead in a similar battle. But beyond that, well, we can see some kind of stone structure right here, which we're pretty darn sure is going to be another mission stop. In fact, that's probably where the boss battle against Peter Prana takes place, on account of the very similar stone looking structure just behind him. As for how you beat him, well, we're not quite sure. This isn't exactly a typical tennis match after all, so maybe you have to keep returning the balls until he misses and he takes damage? Or perhaps it's a lob one into his mouth or something. Whatever may be the case, there are a lot more plants here besides just Petey. On the sidelines, we can see normal sized piranha plants, piranha creepers, including a sleeping one on the left here, and finally these little guys, being the more rarely seen muncher enemy. Now here's something cool, even though this appears to be just a boss arena, you can actually see the outline of a tennis court on the ground, with moss growing between the stones where the court line should be, which we think indicates that this arena will also be available for exhibition matches. And that's it for the boss, so let's return to the map to explore where else the adventure might take us. And if we look just past that stone structure, we can see an odd looking peninsula that seems just the right size for another mission marker. Perhaps one involving a water based challenge? Like, say, a boss fight against a blooper or something? Now moving back inland, we can see some kind of building far off in the distance with a tower near some creepy looking trees. Perhaps an old creepy haunted mansion? Maybe a Luigi's Mansion? Unfortunately, that's about as far as we can see before the giant mountain cuts off our view. But hold up, there appears to be a depression inside that mountain. So yeah, we'd be pretty shocked if we don't end up there at some point too. Heck, maybe that's where Bowser awaits. And that covers up for the story mode. Except for this match against DK, which also takes place during the story section of the trailer, meaning it's almost certainly a story-based mission. And based on the fact that it clearly takes place within the forest, well we're guessing you'll probably find it somewhere within the forest on the map. Pretty shocking, right? Now this arena is quite a bit different from the other two we've seen so far. It features a grassy surface, with ropes serving as a court markings, as well as a net built around three warp pipes. And we're pretty darn certain that something's going to pop out of those warp pipes in order to interfere with the match. Piranha plants, perhaps? Beyond that, we can see a variety of creatures in the background, including bitty buds in yellow, purple, and red varieties. Then there's a few different Yoshis, including a yellow one on a tree, and another on a log, and then a pink one acting as a chair umpire. Oh, and right next to him is one of those little white birds that we see in all kinds of Mario games. Now on the other side of the court, we can see a white rabbit, 
as well as a Goomba hiding in the back. And finally, we can see a Toad hanging around in the far corner. And with that, we're just about done here, but there are still a few more things I wanted to talk about. So, if we go back to the world map, we can see some banner ads for various fictional companies right outside the stadium. Now, it's a little hard to read them all in their entirety, but it's one down here that says Boo that we found to be the most interesting, because it got us wondering as to what other playable characters could be in the game based on what we can see in the trailer. After all, we know of five so far, being Mario, Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, and DK. So, could Boo be a possible sixth? Well, almost certainly, because he's been in almost every other Mario Tennis game to date. But at the least, that banner might be supporting evidence. Or maybe it's related to that creepy looking mansion. Could there be a tennis court or maybe a boss fight involving Boo's? Now, besides Boo, a couple of other obvious inclusions for characters would be Yoshi and Toad, because they both already have character models in the game. And they also both have a history of appearing in the games as well. In fact, with all the similarities we've already pointed out to Ultra Smash, we'd be pretty surprised that most of that game's roster doesn't return here as well. Next up, based on the ruins on the map, we wonder if that might hint at some kind of character returning that's often associated with ruins, such as, say, Dry Bones. And finally, we can't help but wonder if boss characters might be unlockable too. That's right, I'm talking about PD Piranha. Granted, they have to shrink him down quite a bit, but he's been playable before in Mario Power Tennis on the GameCube. In addition, we do see him using charge shots just like the normal characters too. Curious! Although a possible point against this is the fact that he uses pedals in place of tennis rackets. But then again, DK uses his fist to punch baseballs. So who are we to judge? And that's it for the characters. But there is still one more silly thing I wanted to point out. Now, we've already established that Camelot basically reused a stadium from Ultra Smash in Aces. Look, it's fair, I get it, I don't hold it against the game. But is there really any excuse for the artwork of Mario on the TV in the background that's originally from Mario Party 6 nearly 15 years ago? Really, Camelot? Really? And with that, we're finally done covering everything we can dig up on Mario Tennis Aces. But let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments below. And with that, thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more Mario Tennis Aces and everything else Nintendo Switch as well. Catch you later!